You are listening to I Hate Average podcast featuring Jay from the Bronx. Alright, another week I Hate Average podcast, another week down. Thank you for listening again. Last week we had the lovely Miss Victoria Coker of Colored Content. Uh, great episode. I hope you guys had a chance to check it out. We talked about uh, how she created Colored Content and her curating uh, African American and uh, I guess minority content. So, um, not minority, diverse content. We're not minorities. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so we talked to Miss Victoria Coca last week about that. Uh, this week is episode 24. I have the lovely Miss Vanessa Smiles. Uh, yeah, you gotta hit this episode. If, I'm sure the guys know who Vanessa Smiles is. She's a uh, adult entertainer extraordinaire. <laughs> so Vanessa Smiles, uh, I think it's Vanessa Smiles Triple X.com. Anyway, uh, before we get into that, I, f- I felt that we needed to have her on being that, um, you know, the way things are going in this world, we need a little bit of uplifting just to take our minds off of things. But um, before we get into that, I want to talk about uh, last week. I was kind of nervous at the end of last episode because it was on the eve of the election night. And uh, I had like a strange feeling. Everybody else around me kind of was kind of confident saying uh there's no way uh donald trump can win there's no way but i just i kept telling my wife i was telling my mother different people in my life i just been you know say i don't know things is just looking kind of i don't kind of iffy and uh my suspicions was right my spider senses (laughs) was right and uh we have a new president um, in January, President-elect Donald J. Trump, and uh, it's an interesting time. People uh, have been depressed. The people have been going crazy. It's been a lot of protests around the country, and at first I was upset because I, I, he wasn't my pick, my personal pick, um, and it's not for any particular reason. It's just that I just felt that. Hillary was just extremely qualified because of her her life of service but it might be something just to have fresh eyes to look at um, the situations that we are having to deal with in our country Um, and I'm thinking positive (laughs) he has said some crazy things but you gotta understand that this was just a campaign right so he's he's talking he's trying to rally his base he knows what to say to get his particular people to get motivated to vote and um, he did that and he was smart enough to know he's uh, good at marketing and I, me personally I don't believe that he believed everything that he was saying I don't that's just just my personal opinion I don't know he said has said some crazy things but I'm thinking because of his background being that he's from New York, he's a Queens guy, he's a New York guy, how could he share the values of these people, these Southern, Midwestern, um, you know, coal, <laughs> coal miners and truckers, how, like, he has a totally different lifestyle and just to have him saying things that can rally that base. Things that are definitely relevant because there are people in this country who feel that their voice is not being heard. But this just, it seems funny that he's the representative of that. And I don't think that he, uh, he was totally on the up and up in uh, everything he was talking about. And I don't think that he really feels that way. I just, I think he's a New Yorker. He has New York values as a candidate in the past was saying. And, um... I think we're going to be fine. That's just my personal opinion. I I don't think the world is going to end. I don't think the country's going to shut down. I think I think we're going to be just fine. That's my little spiel <laughs> on the election. Uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore because um, people have really been taking it serious. People have really been unfriending people on Facebook. People have really been losing their mind about this thing and. Of course, I don't want to say that it's not serious. Of course it is. But I don't think uh, it's something to lose sleep over. Uh, So, 
<laughs> That's my spiel. Let's get into this interview with Miss Vanessa Smiles. This is fun. This is I had a lot of fun with this one. All right, everyone. I have here the lovely Miss Vanessa Smiles. Uh, you guys probably seen her, um, but this time we get a chance to talk to her and, and uh, hear her perspective on certain things. So, uh, Miss Vanessa, how you doing? Hey, peoples. Hello. It's your girl, Vanessa Smiles. Uh, you can spell it with a Z or an S. It's still the same shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, right now, my uh, place of location is the NYC area, home of the belly of the beast, but I'm always traveling. So Definitely, definitely. Trying to do something different soon. Of course, of course. Um, so I did some field research and... Uh, <laughs> Oh, and, uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what did you find? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I just just uh, just found out. Uh, you seem to have like a, a very outgoing personality, and you seem. I guess uh, most people within your industry, for those who don't know, Vanessa smiles. She is a, a, an adult entertainer. Um, so most women in your industry, they seem to you know have like a maybe like a. a a chip on their shoulder, or they might be kind of stuck up. But you seem to have like a very laid back personality. You seem to be taking things in stride. It, is am I accurate? Yeah, for the most part, I just take life as it comes. Like I just, you know, they, sometimes people do say like, you know, some females are like stuck up or laid back, and so in some kind of sense, it's people perceive me that way too. Sometimes, so it's uh, I guess it depends on your own perceptions, but mainly me, I'm just pretty much you're right rolling with the flow going along with it there's some things i might be stuck up about like everybody has <laughs> intentions there's of certain course. things i'm not, yes i'm gonna say yes to and there's certain things i'm gonna be like hell no but outside of you know sticking within the limitations for the most part i'm pretty much laid, laid back and i'm willing to try certain things i'm always willing to try something so and sometimes i battle with that but i make sure that i always correct that in the future like if i didn't try something in the past like i'm like i'm not gonna miss this chance again and i'm gonna try it you know what i'm saying so yeah definitely definitely so speaking of trying different things what <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> and, uh, what what made you what, what what got you interested in the adult industry um like i had an extremely high sex drive for a long time like pretty much most of my life like okay yeah, like, even when I was, like, a child, like, I used to take, um, I had um, an older sibling who had a lot of porn tapes who used to watch porn. I would take his porn tapes and then I would watch them. <laughs> and I would be humping, like, from, like, the age of five. Like, it, it was for a long time. But as soon as pretty much I got to college, um, I started looking on advertisements online to, like, be paid. Oh, so you already books. knew. You already, as soon as you got to college, you already knew where you was going. Not exactly. Not exactly. I didn't know exactly what I was doing or where I was going. I knew I was going to be in college and I was going to, um, you know, obtain a degree and do that. But I didn't um, have any money. I was broke. I was living on my own for the first time. And, you know, at the time, dorm food is not all the food that you need. So yeah, I, of yeah, course. I'm, one of <laughs> I'm one of those girls who I went to school and everything and I did my videos on the side and it was a way for me to earn money. And then someone taught me how to build websites and produce videos on my own and then I started to gravitate towards that from there. Wow. So did your did your sibling never find out about uh you, you stealing his tapes? <laughs> um I'm not well he probably figured out about that. <laughs> but you know, as far as like yeah I d I don't involve like any of my personal family into my business or anything like that. for the most part. I try to keep that very exclusive. But outside of that I'm uh, I usually gave him back, so hopefully he didn't. <laughs> he should feel no kind of way about him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so um, I guess school wise, so you, you're you're in college and you want you're doing this on the side. Um, well, was yeah. you afraid? Like, it was. It was there any fear, or you just you had a high sex drive, so you just went with the flow. I mean, there's always that lurking fear there with anything that you do because it's sometimes people don't fear <clears throat> doing things or exploring things. They fear the repercussions of what they may be exploring. So for me, um, I wasn't uh, in fear of actually just doing what I was doing. It was just more so people founding out. And I just got into a mindset as if I can do this and make sure I can control the concept that I have and where it goes and those tough sorts of things, then I can control almost who sees it. Not possibly, <laughs> put a little, for the most that I can, I can control who sees it. And so with me, I just made sure after I filmed with a few companies, after that, I just started to do my own thing. This guy named Mike Dirty, I filmed with him. He taught me how to build websites and film and produce and sell videos. And from there, I just started doing my own thing from there. All right. 
So for the most part, uh, I guess the content that comes out now with you is mostly produced by you? Yes. I mean, most of the content that you'll see out there is mostly produced by me. I mean, now I'm working with um, this new group called Team BP, so it's a collaboration effort. Okay. But um, previously and prior to that, it's still always going to be me as far as like the video being edited, the video being uploaded, all those sorts of things. That's always me at the end of the day. So I may collaborate to get new talent to work with different credible people. But outside of that, when it comes to actually sitting down, editing, promoting, designing, all me. So, yeah. Oh, you see, you got it. You edit yourself? Yes. Oh, yes, wow. Yeah. I just, <laughs> just started wow. to explore Adobe Premiere. So now I'm just oh, trying man. to, um, I actually need a new computer. So you guys out there, check out my website, VanessaSmilesTripleX.com, and also RatchetBJs.com. So, you know, when you guys support me, I can definitely get a new uh, computer. Okay. <laughs> so you, you can guys, add, add way, more way content. Better. <laughs> yeah, because I want to do a lot of things with this industry. Like m- most girls, they just want to be in videos or do different content. For me, I'm barely really interested <clears throat> in producing porn okay. and trying to produce different kinds of porn and different scenes and scenarios that people have never seen before. One thing I definitely want to get into personally is um, animated porn. That's another thing uh, I'm probably going to step into very, very soon. Definitely. Website, so yeah. I, I, I know the editing process would be real tedious with that. Uh, it is. I mean, for the most part, certain uh, the more we gravitate as a people, like the more apps are accessible, and it makes it a little bit easier to do certain things. So, That's true. for the most part, YouTube can suffice for most things if you can't put the sound out. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was like I said, I was doing field research, but um, uh-huh. and I see, I see um on your Twitter you had the hashtag pay for porn. So is that something that you, you really strive to? Like you're not really a fan of these that tube is, sites? I love tube sites. Tube sites are great for promotion. The problem is with tube sites, some people don't go past it. You know, they just look at a clip from a tube site and they just leave it as that. They don't follow up. They don't go to the actual person's website and see the other content that they have or see the actual full video. Like some people see yeah. a video on the tube site and they're like, Oh man, the whole video in here, man. I ain't watching this girl's stuff. <laughs> well, if you go to the link, you'll see the full entire video in a way better, you know, platform. You know what I'm saying? So that's the only issue that I have. It's not necessarily an issue with the tube sites. It's more of the mindset of not going further. So I just feel like if people want to check out videos or anything like that, look at the information. Look at where the videos are. Look at the links to the videos. Find out where these um people keep their content at. You can go there, and then that will keep keep you updated. Some people don't even know I have videos that just came out like. Uh, this week i just launched a video yesterday on ratchetbjs.com you know right. so it's you go to the direct website you're always going to get the most recent updated content you can get nice stuff from the tube sites but if you're really a pork connoisseur you're definitely going to want to actually go to that performer's website and actually look at all their stuff because they're going to have way more stuff there than you would find on the tube site so oh, okay. you, tube sites, you go you go searching through stuff sometimes you look for tube sites Come on, even personally me, I've looked at tube sites like four or five pages before you find something that you want, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. so actually, so even though you're in the industry and you, you know, you have sex on a regular basis for money and for, I'm sure, your personal life, you still uh, look at porn? Yes, I do. Because I personally, I, I feel like with anything that you do, there has to be a sort of rules and discipline that you abide by. And for me working in this industry, that's no different. I don't have a real personal relationship with anyone at the moment. I might have that in the future, but at the moment I don't. And um, for me, my vagina is either regulated to me doing videos or me, you know, doing um, companionship with individuals. Okay. So outside of that, I don't engage in any sexual activity. So in the meantime, yes, that's pretty much what I do. I do (laughs) time to time. Uh, look at the certain videos and get off and stuff like that. But I don't do it too often because I never want to be, you know, so used to playing with myself. I want to make sure that when I get around a guy, I'm still going to enjoy it. still the sensitive. He's still... Yes. Yeah, because I feel like women can break their pussy if they use uh, dildos too much. That's a perfect thing. <laughs> is, is, that, is that a thing? Is that really a thing? Yeah. I don't know. Personally, I mean, I I'm, I personally re- would prefer real dick versus a dildo. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> me. All day. I don't yeah. know why. That's just me. <laughs> so. so, I guess uh, wait, because you're a producer, you have your own site, you, you, know, you kind of dictate your own career. So, as far as working with guys, are you usually working with the same group of guys or you have like a 
a list of contacts or friends that you just could call anytime? Well, see, for me, I just, um, like, now I have a certain group of guys that I work with, but I've always limited the amount of people that I work with because I just, that's just how I personally am. I never want to have too many people involved when it comes to porn because that's a, you know, the more people I feel like involved are, is a higher risk sometimes. So it's also about how many people you have involved and the mindset of the people that are involved. So even with the group that I'm working in now, these are very responsible young men who are, you know, who have been in an industry who run their own websites and stuff like that. So they understand the okay. importance of what locations to get and how to film and stuff like that. And uh, the guys I've used in the past have had the same values. So for me, okay. it's not necessarily about how many dudes I can get. I can just use one person and then that worst person can be great for, for me. It's, and most of the time, it's not about the guys. It's about what the different girls are doing. That's my Yeah, problem. of course. <laughs> Getting a lot of girls. That's that's what I really really want. So, all any ladies out there who are listening to this podcast, and if you're ever interested in getting into the adult industry and, or being paid <laughs> cash <laughs> for, for um, performing in adult uh, videos, you can just uh, send an email to dsxxnyc at gmail dot com, or just go straight to my website vanessasmilestripplex dot com, and then you'll find the email uh, right there. And uh, so you just you know you're looking for females. How many? I guess weekly. How many? Uh, guys offer their services to you. Oh, my say. God. No, don't even say weekly. Say daily. <laughs> say daily. Or maybe hourly, you know. Oh, dick my is, God. I always say dick is the, the most free thing on, on earth right now because there's guys <laughs> always offering dick up. Uh, but guys so don't know. We can't, we can't make no money. We can't make no money off that. Uh, yeah, guys could. But this is the thing. The secret is to not give it up. If guys stop doing that, do you know females will go crazy and females will want to give it up to y'all more. So it's a, it's a catch-22. Guys got to learn that. So. But yeah. Uh, oh, so... Since I have you on the line, I have a, a friend, a Facebook friend. He's also a uh, porn producer. I'm not going to say his name, but he just, okay. earlier today, he put on a status. And I guess I want to question you about it because it's pertaining to your business, and I just wanted to get your opinion. Okay. So he, um, he's, I guess he has a gripe about uh, Connect Pal, and he's saying how he wants to shoot with a female. And let me see. What is his name? He wants to shoot with her. But she wants she wants the rights to the footage, so he's gonna pay her for shooting for his site. But she wants the rights to the footage, so do you think he should? He's saying he should, he doesn't want to pay her for the shoot if she gets the rights to the footage. I, not how the industry works. See, there's a lot of females who are coming into the industry who don't necessarily have the proper guidance from the people who's been in the industry for years, uh-huh. and so they create rules that aren't realistic and don't really so apply. he's right so he's right i personally if i'm paying somebody cash for the scene they don't own the scene i own the scene that's why i paid them yeah you know so if they're and that's another thing some people there there's a new thing that the industry is doing now which is this thing that's called content exchange yeah some people like it and some people don't but content exchange is where two people get together they film a video both copies keep a copy of the video which is right, because both copies are obviously... I mean, both individuals are in the video. Yeah. But <clears throat> there's never going to be an instance where you're going to be paid for being in the video and keep a copy for the video. No. That's <laughs> how anything works. You don't go to Walmart, open up the Lay's bag of chips, eat the whole bag, yeah. pay for the bag and put it back. No. like if you want <laughs> That's what the money is for. You pay some money for a video and you own the video. That's pretty much what it is. Now, if somebody decides to do something on top of that, something completely separate, then that's something completely separate. But I think each transaction is individual. And I think when it comes to this industry, some people come in with their own mindset of how things should be done for them, and then they get slightly disappointed <laughs> when it doesn't go that way. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, one more question about the industry, and then we could talk about something else. Uh I know you probably get tired of talking about it, so... I mean, uh, I don't mind. For, for me, I'm pretty much open to any topic. I can pretty much talk about a lot of things, so I don't really, you know, subject myself to any one particular thing. Okay. All right. So, um, what's... But, um, because he mentioned Connect Pal, so what do you think about, I guess, these new... Uh, I guess you could call them amateur stars. They, they're using Connect Pal. They're, they're selling things on Snapchat. They're... Like, do you, are you against that? Because I guess the quality, of course, is not the same as you doing, you know, your own production company. But 
are they like is there a competition or is it just a whole different uh, genre? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, for me, I I consider myself an amateur star as well. Like I don't. <coughs> Sorry. No problem. I don't uh, see that I am any different from them. Mo- like as far as titles are concerned. Okay. <coughs> but the activities that I partake in are definitely slightly different. Like. I personally have a Snapchat on my phone. I opened it like a year ago and I've just never used it. That's just me. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not saying that people shouldn't, you know, actually use Snapchat and Twitter and stuff like that because that's social media. That's what the future is. You know, that's, you can reach so many people in a short amount of time. Like that's the best way to promote something if you have to sell it. I just think sometimes people forget the porn industry is about selling porn. If you don't make a video, what are you doing? <laughs> Because yeah. with Snapchat, you can sell certain things. I mean, you can sell certain clips. That's video. So that I guess that can work in a certain sense. But yeah. I don't know. Certain pages sometimes seem like it's set up for, you know, prostitution almost. You know, so then I just wonder, like, where's the porn? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, that's true. I don't know what guys are looking for exactly. But I'm just interested personally in making great porn and putting it out. And, you know, I think that sometimes you got to put effort into that. You know, <clears throat> these amateur stars sometimes think that they could just use any room. You can use any room for the most part, but you got to sometimes put an effort into how it's going to look, how it's going to come out, you know, and that's going to yeah. come off no matter if it's in a basement or even if it's in a five story house, you know, yeah. I just think that whatever video you're going to make, you have to put some kind of effort into it and you'll definitely be able to see something real. And that's what I think people want to see is real shit. Definitely. So, are you like conscious of, you know, when you, you are you conscious of like the set and and the lighting and the cameras and all that when you when you uh, producing a video or you just go with the flow? I mean, as I've gotten more like into the like, production parts, like I've been used to like you know the cameras and the lights and stuff like that. I do like to have those things because as I'm editing the video, I see that. The- things help because my first videos that I used to film on my own you know they didn't really have all of those features in it so as I got you know as I started to do more filming and stuff like that certain people started to bring them in, and these other people showed me how important these things are and it makes a difference That's okay true. you know people can be amateur stars but make something that can be really really close to professional quality yeah definitely I know I'm as if you want to view yourself as an amateur star, from what I've seen from my research, you yeah, you have good quality stuff. But uh, well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I guess because I've never worked for any like real big professional company, so I guess that's why I never really consider myself a professional that much. I consider myself an amateur porn star for the most part. But I'm, you know, I'll take any title either way. You know, as long as people can see me, recognize what I'm doing, and you know, support it, I appreciate it. You know. Definitely, definitely. So, um, about I, th- I think you was uh, I think you emailed me when I was trying to get you on the show. You was talking about a radio show that you're trying to do. Yes, yes, yes. That's another reason why I wanted to do this interview with you. Every Sunday, I will be having a radio show hosting it on DTF Radio. It'll oh be wow! From nine to ten, it's actually going to start this Sunday. This Sunday, wow. the Sunday on the twentieth. Great. And um, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna uh, have my best to have some stars. Up there, probably mostly like amateur porn stars and maybe oh, yeah. music, art, music artists and business owners, but it's going to be called the S- Smile 69 Network Show. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, definitely check it out. It's going to be some hot shit. We're going to be talking about everything, especially from a real female's perspective. I'm a girl yeah. born and raised in Brooklyn, but I've traveled in many places, so yeah. I've definitely experienced a lot of things. I mean, I'm only 25. I have a, a, a long way to go, but for the yeah. most part, I have, I feel like I have a voice that people can definitely recognize and understand because it's, it's, you know, I'm going to be speaking straight truth. You of know, course. Kind of, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, congrats on that. I'm looking forward to that and I'm definitely going to check Thank it out you. on Thank Sunday. Thank you. Are you in the, um, I don't know if you ever, uh, say your location, but if you're ever in the New York city area, we definitely have to get you on board and get you to come down to the station and, you know, definitely let people know what you do. Cause I was checking out, you know, your Instagram and stuff and you be on your job, you know? Uh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm actually, I am in New York. I am. Uh, oh. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yo, you're really doing a great thing. And I see that you, you reach out to people and you're persistent and you know, you, you're thorough and that's what people <laughs> recognize. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I really wanted to get you on Cause I just, you seem like, like a cool person and, um, 
and I, I just wanted to get you on. It wasn't, I was trying, I wanted to be persistent, but I didn't want you to think I was a sicko. So I was just, because <laughs> I'm sure no, you get emails yeah, but, all day. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> but if, if you're a thorough person, you can actually see through that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, sorry. no problem. I'm no smoking in my crib. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. So I guess I could use your female perspective. Um, so, when uh, do you enjoy uh, having sex, even though you're doing it uh, as a job, or do you actually enjoy it, or you just think of it as you clock it in and going to work? Well, for me, I try to make sure I engage in activities that's going to be pleasurable for me, even though it is technically still work. I try to actually make sure that I'm going to be in situations where it is going to be pleasurable, it is going to be fun, and it's not going to feel as if it was work. You know, I, I, you know, I've definitely I've turned down scenes with, you know, people before. I, you know, <clears throat> there's certain uh, groups of people that I've never shot with and stuff. So there's a lot of probably individuals or maybe a few. I'm not sure who may feel <laughs> some way because I won't film with them. But it's just about who you feel comfortable with, you know, filming. And sometimes as females, they don't, you know, they're not completely comfortable with saying that. I even had that problem with battling that myself. I, you know, the question, yeah. like, should I do it or should I not? You know, for me, I just, as the more I'm engaging with different people, I just, you know, try to be true to myself and just go by that and work with people who I feel welcome me and make me feel comfortable. And I do the same with them. So. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I guess since I have you on and you're a female expert, what tips can you give to guys? How about that? Oh, man. Uh, don't be too rough. Personally, me, if you're eating vagina, I don't want you sucking on my vagina. I don't know. Some guys think that pussy eating is sucking. Like, that's not it. Like, uh, even even uh, professionals do that or just guys? Yeah, eat? they do that too, you know. See, for me, I'm like, I, like, and some girls love getting their vagina eat. I'm like, all right with it, but it's not like a big, big thing for me. But yes, if you are if you like to eat pussy, pussy specifically, you know, <laughs> don't suck on it. Licking, you'll get, you know, a bet, much better reaction. And if you got some pussy, <clears throat> shave your facial hair. Females do not want to feel... The grain of your your cheeks. Really? Uh. <laughs> Depending on how sharp it is. If it's real sharp, yeah, you know. But outside of that, I mean, that uh, females love to give head. You know, like they always say if a female doesn't suck your dick, she doesn't respect you type shit. So, <laughs> so that's that's a real thing. Yeah, I do believe that. You know, there's a lot of females. They'll play like, oh, I don't suck dick. Da, 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 da. Uh, every, I believe this. Everybody does what they want for who they want. There may be a female, she may not suck one guy's dick, but there's somebody else that she'll do it for. So <laughs> I believe that guys should definitely, you know, if they sense that, you know, run the other way or just find somebody who respects you in that way, you know? <laughs> um, other things, I do think that guys need to be more honest with females, even if they feel like the truth might hurt, whatever it is. Uh, I think okay. That, yeah, if they feel like, oh, I'm, you know, I can't be faithful or I, I, I you know, I feel like I need to explore and I need to be, you know, having sex with more than one woman or being with more than one woman or whatever the case may be. Be honest about it. Yeah. Even if, you know, you know that she might not be with it or she might be against it or whatever the case may be. Be straightforward about it and then, you know, at least give her the opportunity to deal for it from there. That's but, um, true. Yeah, but as for females, I think that a lot of females out there should take that same quality as well. Be honest about what they want and who they want. Some girls, they say like, oh, no, it's okay. I know you're dealing with uh, she, she, and all them people. And they just sit around like it's okay. And then later on, they bring up the issues. So, yeah, yeah, they go crazy. <laughs> exactly. But but originally, they when they said it was okay, I was a victim of that myself. You know, I, I grew up and I started to work with a lot of people who are very, very thorough around me. People yeah. like thirty people like Tim Dread from Miami. People like um, uh, the guy from our ATL Bad Boy. He had a great site. You know, just a lot of different people. I've worked in in New York. Uh, Team DP. The people I'm working with now, Mr. Nuts. Um, okay. Even Max Payne, somebody who was in Jersey, who we worked with, had a production company. So a lot of few people that I definitely worked with. <clears throat> you know, they everybody has different values and stuff that they instill in themselves and. They pass that on to you when you work with them. And see, for me, I've always made sure that I try to uphold a lot of the things that they instill. So I think that you take that into your personal life as well. And females, 
depends on who she's around sometimes that dictates her mindset that dictates what she believes in that's true that's true I appreciate the, that advice so um, last question before I, I don't want to keep you out all night uh, so your female fans how, what's your reaction for female fans or do you not really get that I think females watch porn in a different way. Like, I think a lot of females out there watch porn, but it's not, like, that deep for us to make comments or actually contact the actors. Like, it's a different type of thing. Because <laughs> even as a female myself, like, I've watched porn. Like but I just don't, um... I never, like, actually... I never even look at the person's profile sometimes, you know? But I always, like, I'll buy videos from people. You know, I support the industry. I might not look at the whole entire page, but I might definitely buy two to three videos from you if it shows up, you know? So <laughs> but you ain't gonna let her know. You ain't gonna... <laughs> exactly. We won't, we won't contact them and stuff like that. So I, I think that the, I, may, I might do have a lot of females out there, you know, who might be watching my BJ site learning some skills or watching my site learning some skills. And whatever they are doing, I appreciate their, you know support either way and I appreciate the support from the females that I have been working with so it's um, it's different for females I think that there is a female support out there but we just don't show it as much so yeah. it's just a different uh, type of rapport cool cool oh thank you so much Vanessa I appreciate your time yay yeah. Good you gotta luck. put some sound effects up for my round of applause I definitely I will I will when I'm <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, um, yes, yes. good luck with Good luck with your show. I can't wait to hear it on Sunday. Yes, good luck with your endeavors. I will be tuning in yeah, definitely every Tuesday. Thank Just got to listen to you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, have a good night. Yes, definitely. We'll definitely stay in touch. I want to get you on my radio show so we can chop it up and, you know, definitely speak on your endeavors and all of your history and what you've been doing with podcasting because you're doing a great thing. Man. Cool, cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, we'll stay in touch. All right, definitely. Good talking to you. You too. All right, there you have it. That's my interview with Miss Vanessa Smiles. Uh, definitely, uh, if you want, <laughs> you can check out her information, check out her site. I think it's VanessaSmilesXXX.com. Um, I believe that's it. But uh, definitely check out more so her show. She has the VS69 show on DTF Radio, definitely check it out. It's starting this Sunday, DTF Radio. Um, she's excited about it, and we want to support her as our as our group. We want to support her in this endeavor. Thank you again, Vanessa, for your time. Thank you for sharing. It was fun. Thank you guys for listening. Talk to you guys next week. Uh, of course, on my social media, check out I Hate Average J A Y. That's my Twitter and Snapchat. My Instagram is I Hate Average Podcast. Um, and we're going to keep going. Uh, of course, rate and review on iTunes if you haven't already. Of course, you can email me, show at averagej.com. Once again, it's show at averagej.com. I uh, got a couple of emails with people requesting uh, to be on the show. Uh, um, definitely, I'm going to be reaching back out to you guys. I want you guys to get on the show. Um, ex- I'm it's just taking on a life of his own <laughs> and I'm having a lot of fun doing this show and I appreciate the feedback you guys are giving me so definitely email me show at averagej.com if you love it if you hate it any feedback is good it's appreciated and uh, I'll talk to you guys next week <laughs>